Well, it's that time of the week again. It's time for Programming by Stealth, and this is installment 173, recorded November 23rd, 2024. I'm your host, Allison Sheridan. Of course, I'm joined by your co-host, Bart Bouchatz. Hello there. <laughs> it is nice to be back. We have a new intro, and it's, we're both struggling with, like, when are we supposed to talk, right? That was your intro. I guess I, I usually say, welcome to the show, Bart. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, no, we'll get the hang of it. By episode 200, we'll be a pro. Probably. And then we'll change something. Right, of course we will, because both of us do that all the time, always. <laughs> all right, so I'm excited. We are going to get our fingers actually dirty in the, in the terminal here on uh, on Git submodules, right? Yes, we are. And like we did with the original Git series, we are going to do it in the show notes the hard way, on the terminal with the Git command. Because if you can do it with the Git commands... The same verbs, the same phrases will be in the right-click menus on things. They will be on the buttons in your Git GUI. And so every Git GUI will be a little bit different, but they're all going to be keying off the underlying concepts and they're all going to be keying off those real Git commands under the hood. So if you know the real Git commands, you should be able to use any GUI and it saves us being sort of pedantic and say, oh, the GUI we support is blah, 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 because I don't like the same GUI forever. So why would this show? Yeah, yeah. I and I kind of look at this as like you need to understand how to add and what it means to add and subtract, multiply, but it's okay to use a calculator. Yeah, absolutely. You punch the buttons and hey presto. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's also how you can tell if something's wrong if you actually understand the underlying concepts of addition and subtraction and multiplication division. Fair point. Yes. Why do I have a why do I owe the government more money than I made? Maybe I got something wrong in my math. Why did Maybe I, I miss multiply Mars? by the wrong number? Oh, my units were wrong. <laughs> or that one, yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, when we were last recording a month ago, we introduced the concept of a Git repository inside a Git repository, which in Git speak is called a submodule. And Git has commands for handling these submodules in a clever way, which is one of the many reasons Git is better than a lot of other version control systems. Because if you tried that on subversion, it would it would explode in a heap of incoherence. It oh, couldn't handle nesting. It I really that. couldn't handle that. Um, so last time it was all theory and wetting your appetite and saying the kinds of problems it could solve. And there are many, many kinds of problems it could solve. So this time we are getting our hands dirty, as you say, and we're going to do it by working off a simplified but realistic scenario we're going to basically pretend to be a small software company that runs a few web apps, and we're going to just play different parts. Now, the actual code is trivial, but it's not about the actual code. It's about the concept of nest, you know, nesting modules and pulling changes and so forth. So we're going to break it into two installments. So I have five scenarios invented, um, and three of them are for this week, uh, or this installment, and then two of them are for the next time. The, those last two each... Scenario is a little bit more complicated, so that's why it's asymmetric, um, because our scenario three is as big as one and two put together, and three and four are chunky. Before we start into the detail here, um, on our Slack, potv.com forward slash Slack, we had some discussions about this, and I think you and I were having discussions. Anyway, the community, which is a great place and everyone should go. We're having some discussions about whether, you know, Git submodules, how is that related to uh, public repositories? And the answer is they're separate context, contexts. So Git is very at home in the open source world because that's literally where it came from. Git is equally at home sharing privately, which is, sounds mildly oxymoronic at first, but when you think about it, a private group is sharing privately. So you and I have repositories that we share between us but are not shared with the rest of the world. Companies tend to have private repositories, but they could be shared by a thousand people. Big enough companies, they could be shared by tens of thousands of people. Right? So it's sharing in private. Okay. And so you can use a Git submodule either where the public repository could consume another public repository or a private repository could consume a public repository or a private repository could consume a private repository or a private repository could just mix and match. You can't really have a public repository consuming private because that would break as soon as someone cloned the public repository. It wouldn't right. be public anymore if it had a private dependency. Right. But basically, you can mix and match to your heart's content. I thought of a question I hadn't asked before. Can a submodule, can a, can a Git repo be a submodule to two different repos? Yes. Not only that, but a, 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 a submodule is just a repository you've put in a folder. 
So that one could have submodules too. Yeah. So you could have four submodules at the top level, then one of those could have three submodules, and one of those could have two submodules. I, it could submodules be submodules all the way, the way down. down. <laughs> Absolutely it can, yes. As many turtles as you like. Maybe I uh, did Mr. ask that because I remember making that joke last time, but uh, hey, it was a month ago. Okay. Yes. But it, then the dependencies um, would be in a certain way, right? You You couldn't have a public... Uh, a, a private uh, repo having a private submodule and then a public repo having that same private mo submodule, that would break. It would. And the other thing is, if you make a circle, I think you get infinity and explosion. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you tried to put one into one it came from before, I think it would completely break everything. You'd run a git command and it would just be, it would never end. <laughs> and your hard drive would probably fill up as it cloned and cloned and cloned and cloned and cloned and cloned and cloned. That would be it may have a try. safety valve built in. It may have like a counter that if I am 500 deep, stop. I don't know. Um, don't try while we're recording. Whenever you do try, don't try while we're recording. Okay. Um, we are also back for the first time in a long time with uh, installment resources because we are going to be playing along. And we're going to have to do the trick we did way back in like installment 113 where we were learning about remote Git repositories, but I didn't want to set up a server that then would have to be online forever. So we're going to simulate a server with a folder, and we're going to use a URL that is a file path. And that is perfectly fine. Git doesn't mind that. It treats it just like it would if you're doing it over HTTPS or SSH. It works fine. However, for a really good security reason, Git won't do that in some circumstances in case you're being tricked by a baddie. So... If you have, if you imagine you clone something from a public re repo and it then has some private, some relative paths, they could end up sucking in code from something that you really didn't know. Oh, okay. So they make you explicitly say to the Git command, no, 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 I'm good with using local file paths. So we're going to have to do that in some of our commands. Now, this basically, this happens when you have one Git command that implies other git commands. So if you do it directly by typing in git space clone space dot dot slash whatever, git will like, well, you've literally typed this in. This is exactly what you meant. I'm not going to make you prove it to me. You've just told me to do this. So if the human's but typing, if you, it's okay with it. Exactly. It's like, okay, you meant this. Okay. But if you write one git command and that git command triggers other git commands under the hood, and if the other Git commands are where the file path appears. Then Git was like, ooh, I'm being asked to do something implicit and in secret. I'm okay. going to make you be explicit about this. And so there is a, an option, a configuration setting that controls Git's behavior for these types of URLs. And it's protocol.file.allow is the name of the setting, which is not unreasonable. And it has three values. Never, which means I really don't care where I come across a file URL. I am never, ever, 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 ever going to use a file URL ever. It has user, which means if the user told me to directly and explicitly, fine. Otherwise, I'm cranky. And that's the default, is basically if you do it directly, we're fine. And the third setting is always. In other words, whether it's direct or indirect, file URLs are fine. So obviously, we need to use the setting always. Now, there is an aside in the show notes. You could make that a permanent change. You could add something to your global Git configuration with git config minus minus global. And then on your computer forevermore, all file URLs would be allowed. There's a reason the default is user. So I'm telling you, this is how you do this terribly silly thing. But unless you really, really, really have a reason, maybe you work in a place where all of your repositories are on a NAS and you do everything over files, okay. But don't Otherwise, ever do don't anything do publicly, don't ever do, yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah, I'm gonna pretend you so never told So for us, us we're gonna, yeah, I edited the show notes just before we recorded to make this an aside, to make it really clear that this is really not what we're recommending to people. By the way, here's a stupid thing you could do if you wanted to, don't do it. Well, unless you are one of these small, small group of people for which it's not stupid. Okay. There are, like I say, know. legitimate reasons if you used NAS, yeah. So what we're going to do instead is do it on a per command basis. So as and when we want to make the exception, we make the exception there and then. So git takes an optional argument minus C for configuration, 
and it lets you set any configuration setting and it will only last while that one command is running. So you say git minus C name of setting equals value and then whatever else you were going to do, space, pull, push, whatever. And then that one setting only applies for that one iteration of the git command and then it evaporates again and it goes back to its default. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it on a per command basis. Okay, so it'll look kind of goofy in here. You wouldn't probably be doing it if you were doing it up in a git, git repo but for for this this would be uh this would be fine yes exactly so in the real world you probably cloned over https or, or ssh no problem you won't need to do this minus c thing but we're going to meet it a few times today so i'm telling you about it i also want to lay a little bit of a foundation to help us not confuse ourselves because submodules are nested repositories so each submodule folder is a Git repository. So there are a lot of Git repositories at play in this conversation. Like it's Git repositories all over the place. So to illustrate the scale of possible confusion, imagine we have our Git repository with two submodules. Straight away, that's three Git repositories. Right. The, the outer container, which has a folder which contains another repository and another folder which contains a third repository. We have three, but no. There's more because a submodule is always cloned from a URL, which means the submodule always has a matching remote, which is the, the repository you got it from. So that means there's two of them. Wait a minute. Right? Wait, wait, if wait, you wait, say wait, wait. Git stop, stop, stop. I don't, I don't buy that. I just created a folder inside my uh, module. Uh, I'm sorry, inside my Git repo, and I initialized it as a Git repo. There are two. But they are not, that's not a submodule. That's just a Git repo in a Git repo. If you say, if you add a submodule, you're giving it the URL of the code you want to fetch. The point of a submodule is to fetch another piece of code. Well, wait, so that has to exist. This yet. So I don't know. I that know, yet. but I'm saying you, you said it's just a well, folder okay, so inside the, of a folder. Well, okay, but it's a folder from which you get another Git repository, right? You're you're getting someone else's code, so that means that it exists. There has to be somewhere to get it from. The somewhere is also a Git repository. When you clone these show notes, they exist on the server in GitHub, they exist on my, lab, on my computer, and they exist on your computer. There's three repos. GitHub, well, me, and you. Okay. Because remember, Git is peer-to-peer. -peer. There is no client server. Right, They're all right, just right. repositories. I understand that. Yeah, so we've got three copies of the repo. So there are, well, right. Okay, so we have three completely different local repositories, and then each two, each of those submodules are a copy of their source, which means that there are two more repositories. So, okay, we have five repositories, two of which are copies of each other, but there's still five repositories in play that I have so, to talk about, that I have to describe, because when you're pushing and pulling, those are not perfect copies. So hang on. So, but you're saying that I can't create a local repo... A lo initialize a local repo inside of a, an existing repo on my computer and that be a submodule. By definition, it can never be one unless it's been cloned somewhere and I got it from that somewhere. I can't create it myself. I have to get it from somewhere. Okay, so if, if you make an empty folder and you make you just go git init, it is a git repository inside a git repository. It's not a submodule. It's just a repository inside a repository. A submodule is that extra thing where you're intentionally taking someone else's content and bringing it in in a controlled way. Why can't it be my content? That's its job. Oh, it can be yours. It can't just, or sorry, by my, I mean the repository that I'm adding this submodule to. The point of a submodule is to bring in content from another Git repository. Okay. I guess I'll have to see how it's different because I thought once it was initialized, it was a re uh, submodule, but maybe not. Let's, well, let's once keep it's going so we can learn how, it, how we do this and I'll okay. see if I can find it. Okay. All right, so we're, we're kind of proving the point of this room for confusion here, but there's actually a sixth repository because the chances are extremely high that, you're, that the one you're working in was cloned from a server. So when you're working on these show notes, they're cloned from GitHub, so that's, it has a remote. So, or in the case before you recorded, you accidentally had four remotes. So that's another repository that's in play. So we have six repositories in play. Three of them are remote. Three of them are local. They're in pairs. We have three couples. We have three pairs of modules, but the, sorry, of repositories, but there's still six repositories. And I have to talk about these. 
And I'm pushing and pulling between repositories. So we need to have some words to not make this even more confusing than it's going to be because it's repositories all the way down. So I'm going to refer to the repository that contains the submodules as the outer repository. And I'm going to talk about submodules either using the word submodule or inner repository, depending okay. on which makes sense in the English sentence. And so when I say outer, I mean the one that has the submodules. And when I say inner, I mean I'm inside that folder now that is the submodule. Okay. And I'm going to be really consistent. I rewrote the show notes to make sure I was really consistent because otherwise this is going to be training. I, I, I may see, I needed to say this up front, but yet how do I say it up front? I, yeah, we're in a circle here. Yeah, and Bart's looking at my face going, okay. <laughs> he knows what yeah, I mean I, when I, I say it. How, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So anyway, our scenario, we are a small web app business and we are going to pretend that we are basically we're a company we develop some web apps and we share the same brand across all of our web apps because we want to keep them consistent these are our web apps right so they all look the same and we are going to have a git repository that contains just our brand and that's going to be managed by our design team because they know what they're doing with that kind of stuff and then our developers are going to have a separate git repository for each of our apps and we don't want to copy and paste our brand into our apps. We want to incorporate the brand in a controlled way. So obviously the brand should be a submodule inside app one and a submodule inside app two. And so our brand developers will update our brand, push it up to the server, we'll pull the changes down into our apps. That is the big picture scenario we're setting up here. So. For the first time in ages, there is a zip file in this installment. And if you expand it out, you will uh, find it has some content. And if you go into that in your terminal, if you'd like to play along, there is a lot of setting up to do. So I've scripted the setting up. And because we've done bash, you can open the file and explore the bashy goodness to your heart's content if you like. Uh, but ultimately, if you run chmod plus x start at sh, basically says just make sure that shell script is executable. And then dot slash init pbs173 demo.sh, and it will do all the work to get our pieces set up for us. So if you run that, the first thing it's going to do is to create four folders that are going to pretend to be different computers. So the first folder is pretending to be the Git server for our, our pretend company, which we're calling PBS Core or Corpse. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it with a company. Core. Is it Core? Just, just Core. Core. Good. Good. PBS Core. Um, then we have a folder called pc-app1dev, shock and or horror. That is the folder pretending to be app1 developer's PC. I'd like to make one little note. If you're looking at this with certain fonts, it looks like it says Apple, A-P-P-L. And I couldn't figure out why Bart was talking about Apple in this. And I finally, I changed the font to something else so that I could see that it was actually app1. Interesting. I wonder what the theme on our actual website, I'm hoping it'll be good. We'll find out. I think our... <laughs> It's bootstraps, so it should be good. It's usually good. Hope so. Um, okay, PC so app to dev. Yeah, to, so I, I, I talked over design. you, so I want to make sure. Uh, since I interrupted you, is we've got the remote repos and then PC app one dev and PC app two dev. Those are the two PCs of our newly hired developers. And PC brand designer Shock and Horror is the PC of the person looking after our brand. And so we have all of our PCs? players here. Personal mean, computer, not uh, computer? Windows personal computer. Well, per, the Mac is the first personal computer. But it doesn't have to be a Someone, personal computer. Eh. Okay. Oh, Quit niggling, Allison. There. Let him move Let's on. not go there. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing it does. It makes those folders. Then there are copies of all the repositories we need safely saved as Git bundles called pbscorp-brand.bundle, pbscorp1.bundle, and those need to be actually turned into real Git repositories for us to play with. So the script expands those into what are called bare repositories sitting on the server. If that confuses you, installment 113 explains that on a Git server, you have a repository with no working copy because otherwise you could break things horribly. So that's why they end in .git. There are Git repositories you can clone, you can push, you can pull, but you can't go into that repository and make a change. 
It's just, it's a server. It's not okay. designed to be a PC. So that's all that's doing. It's just putting those repositories onto our pretend server. And then it makes an empty repository that we're going to need for scenario two on the server. And it also pre clones the brand repository into the brand designer's PC because we need that in scenario three. So we've just set everything up for us to do our scenarios. Got it. So the very, the first thing you're going to want, uh, the first way you're likely to bump into a submodule is by cloning an existing repository that happens to have one. So let's start by doing exactly that. We're going to pretend to be a brand new developer who's just joined the company has been told you familiarize yourself with app one, please. So you sit down at your brand new PC and you need to clone the repository for app one, which has a submodule, the brand. So initially, so and if you'd like to play along, change into the folder PC app one dev so that you're now on the app one devs new computer. Okay. And that folder is empty because that dev hasn't done anything yet. So we want to clone the repository for app one, which is git clone dot dot slash remote repos pbs core dot app one dot git. Ordinarily, that would be something like HTTPS colon slash as github.com, whatever. But look, we're doing all this local, so it's just a file path. So now we've downloaded the repository. And if you open it in the finder, you'll see that, oh, yeah, it has an index at HTML. And it has a folder named brand. Let's open index at HTML on our favorite browser. First thing you'll notice is it doesn't seem to have a brand. It looks like Bootstrap 5 out of the box. Yeah. Okay. Exactly what it looks like. And if you open the developer console, there's a giant big error. Fail to load brand forward slash style.css. Could not be found. Well, hang on a second. There's a folder called brand, but there's literally nothing in it. Huh. This is how you tend to discover you have something with submodules, by the way. You tend to discover it by going, well, I've cloned this and it's broken. Um, if it's code that's supposed to compile, it won't compile. If it's a plugin that uses PHP, you'll get PHP errors up the wazoo. Something will not be working and you'll be left scratching your head. So let's pop into our terminal and go into our repository. So CD PBS core app one, and let's do a git status. I'm sure that'll tell us exactly what's going on here. Why is this website that I just cloned not working? Well, it says on branch main, your branch is up to date nothing to commit working tree clean. That wasn't very helpful, was it? <laughs> that tells us everything's fine. But it isn't because we have an error and the app doesn't look right. Okay, well, there's clues. So as you note later in the show notes, if you're using a GUI, there'll be more clues. But for us on the terminal, we need to go looking for the clues more proactively. So the well, first we, thing is that also, every single... Back up. We also, as a web developer, uh, looking at the uh, boot plain, the plain bootstrap uh, uh, web page, we had no way of knowing mm -hmm. that was it what it was supposed to look like. So we wouldn't have known to even look at the uh, console to see that it hadn't loaded the branding. In the, in the case of a web app like that, where all, the only thing that breaks is the branding, you're right. In my real world experience, when I bumped into these things, I had PHP errors 20 oh, okay. high scrolling up the screen. Okay. All right. It was like, I've broken my website is actually what it looked like. Because it, okay, it was a plug into Moodle, as it happens. And our Moodle went, Pfft. don't worry, okay. it was the dev site. <laughs> I don't experiment on production. Oh, no, no. One does not do that. Anyway. So in this case, the error console is the closest I could get to showing an error that a developer could conceivably notice. So we'll have to play along. So every single Git repository that has submodules will have a file called dot git modules. I wish it was called dot git submodules because God knows how many times I made that typo in these show notes. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, it's called git modules. And that file is like .git ignore. That is a standard file that is used by Git to configure itself. And so if you view that file by saying cat.git modules, you will see that it defines a submodule named brand with the folder path brand and the remote URL, which is not very remote. It's a file path because we're, we're simulating these things. Dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, remote repos, pbs, core, brand, dot, git. 
So that's telling us that that remote repository should be cloned into that folder. Should be, not has been, should be. Is it telling you that it isn't? Just should have What's, been. Well, it's telling you that if you'd like this code to work, it must be. In other words, it's telling you that this repository assumes that it will do this, so but you have to actually there, do it. If it had been, uh, uh, that had been pulled in, that submodule had been uh, cloned in here, it would say the same thing. Correct. Okay. That is a statement of what it, yeah, yeah. that is a what statement of how this do. repository is configured. Got it. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's a configuration file. Yeah. So if we type git submodule status, it tells us that we have a commit ID, which is a giant glob of X always, and that it should be in brand, and it says minus in front of it. And I've only just noticed the minus now. I should update the show notes to draw attention to the minus. The minus means I don't have this, and I should, because that minus will disappear after we, after we actually set things up properly. So what it's saying is this commit should be in that folder, and it isn't. So the minus tells us that. So I'll make that item three here that we should notice. Yes, I, perfect. Yes, please. Okay. So the first thing to notice is, oh, brand is a submodule because the command git submodule status will only tell you about submodules. So if there were none, it would have just returned straight back to the cursor with literally nothing. So, okay, immediately git submodule status tells us, ah, okay, there is a submodule and it's named brand. And it tells us the ID of the remote commit that it wants. doesn't have yet because we haven't told it to, but it wants. Is it a correct so statement to the say the, the minus before the commit tells us that it hasn't yet been pulled? So, yes. Okay. It is behind where it should be. Okay. Yeah. So the very, very first thing we have to do, actually, is to tell... So we have cloned this Git repository. So we now have a local copy of it, and our local copy doesn't yet hasn't yet figured out how it should talk to that submodule. So you tell it to ingest into its .git folder, which is a giant big database, the facts in the .git modules file by saying git space submodule space init. And that way it will read that file and it will go, oh, okay, so I should have a submodule called brand, okie dokie. And it says it's that dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash. Well, what's that really? Oh, that's slash user slash Allison or slash user slash Bart. It'll figure out the actual path to everything and it will actually set up the submodule in its own brain. Okay, so the answer it comes back with is that it blah, 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 registered for path brand, registered. Is it initialized? Yes. No. So now the brain knows about it. So the, the config file is sitting beside the .git folder, which is your local database. So now it has incorporated the .git modules file into its hidden .git folder, which is the folder you never, ever, ever, ever touch because that's Git's database. And if you mess with that, Git explodes. Okay. So it has now incorporated that human visible thing into a machine visible database that you don't touch. So git submodule, sorry, git submodule init does not initialize the submodule. It registers that it exists. It tells the git database, hey, there is a submodule over here that we're going to ask you to go get later, but we're, but hang on, we're just fixing to make a plan to initialize it. Wow. Yeah. That's unfortunate, but no, okay. Don't worry, you don't have to do that all the time, right? You do that when you clone the module, or sorry, when you clone the repository, I should say repository, there's another typo. Uh, so when you close the repository, you have to initialize the submodules if it has any. And if later a second submodule were to be added to this repository and you did a git pull and then that second submodule arrived, that would arrive inside the .git submodules folder or file, but it wouldn't yet be in your database. So you'd have to do a git submodule init again. So it registers the new submodule. I have this feeling that they should change that in the future. Like, if you if you clone Agreed. a repo that has a submodule, why not initialize it in your .git file? That, like, why make people do that manually? There must be some circumstance under which you don't <clears throat> want to. But yes, <clears throat> if because of some sort of weird network reason you have to use a different URL for the same module. You're going to fetch the same code, but you have to fetch it differently. 
maybe you can't use SSH, you have to use HTTPS, hmm. then you could edit your local copy of the file and then do an init. And then you could work away perfectly after that. But you would be talking to the repository in different ways. So there are edge cases. And they're very on the edge and they're called out in the official documentation as edge mm. cases. You know, in the unlikely event, you can do this. So I think that may be why they're not completely auto atomic, but there should be like an option that just says minus minus do everything. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. minus minus do everything. Minus, do it for me. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Do it may even be an option in the very latest version of Git, but the Mac is not very good at getting the very latest version of Git. So maybe that problem is solved and I haven't come across it yet. So now our local Git repository knows everything it needs to know, and it's ready to actually check or pull that specific commit from that specific URL. So to actually go and fetch the actual information from the remote repository, we're now ready to do that with git space submodule space update. Okay. Wait a minute. I, I pasted that in and it says fatal transport file not allowed. Did we forget to put our git minus c protocol dot file dot allowed dot equals always in Bart? Well, forget is an interesting word. I left it out on purpose so you could walk into the error. Yes. <laughs> okay. So remember when you see that, that's probably because you're talking about uh, going to these uh, relative URLs, right? These file paths, exactly. Correct. They don't have to be relative. It's just a file oh. path instead of HTTP or HTTPS. An early okay. draft of the show notes had that wrong, which okay. is why it's wrong in your head. I'm positive that's um, why I said it wrong. <laughs> Oh, totally, completely. Um, so, and now you'll see cloning into, and it tells us, yay, submodule path brand checked out, and it tells us the commit that we had before ah. in our git submodule status. Yeah, and there's no minus on it. And there's no minus on it anymore because it has now been checked out. So it's now, okay, this is in sync. So I said I wanted that folder to have this checkout, and it does, or this commit checked out, and it does. Yay! Great. We are good. Okay. So if you reload index at HTML, it's now, uh, well, it's branded. I won't say it's branded well, <laughs> but it's, it's branded. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like something. Exactly. I, I kind of made sure it looked so, you know, notably different. Uh, some silly Google fonts and some silly colors. Okay. So that's our first and very realistic scenario, cloning a repository with a submodule. And okay, if you had me, many submodules, this would have worked just the same. Okay, so let me review. So this was a new developer into app one. They cloned the repo. They didn't get the branding. They figured it out by, by uh, not by Git status, but uh, you could see it in the console on the display. But then uh, we did something in here, oh, our Git submodule status, and we could look into the... Um, uh, into the config file and and see it into the Git modules uh, file and see that we were supposed to have branding, and then we did the Git submodules uh, init, which uh, submodule init, which doesn't fix it. But then we did the update, and it did. Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. So, so that's now one. let's look at scenario two. That's scenario one. Simply cloning someone else's code that has a submodule. So the second most likely thing you're going to need to do is to actually add one to something of your own. So you're working on an app and you decide, I want to pull in that code that Bob has been working on. It's great code. I just want to pull that into my app, and, but I don't want to reinvent the wheel or anything. So let's use a submodule for that. So we're going to simulate that scenario by saying that we are a developer who has just been told, you have to start app one. Uh, so you get to build an initial version of app one and app one, you know, you make it do something and then you're going to have to connect it to the brand. So you're going to have to add a submodule. You just said app so one, we're talking about app two now, just to be clear. Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I always do these things. You've no idea how often I fix that in the show notes. <laughs> um, so if you change into the PC app to PC app two dev folder, and then you will find that is completely empty, mm -hmm. but our init script created a repository waiting for us to clone it. That repository is empty, but it is sitting on the server waiting for us to clone it. Uh, so we can say git clone dot dot slash remote repos pbs core app two dot git. And when it clones, it'll actually tell us, warning, you appear to have cloned an empty repository. So yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. 
So if we change into that repository now, so CD PBS Core App 2, we are going to create an initial version of our app by copying the one I made earlier, sitting a few levels down in the zip file. So the command to copy that file into index.html is sitting there. Okay. So now I've got and a nice if you do index.html. A... But it bet it's not going to have any yeah. branding, is it, Bart? Correct. So if you want to open it up there, you'll see that it has, it's a silly little web app and I was getting into the spirit for Christmas. It is a countdown to the next Christmas and it will be right every year. It's seconds it's to hard Christmas. Coded. Seconds. seconds. 2.7 million. Well, I, to make I can't it dynamic. wait that long. <laughs> I know, it's forever. Um, so, okay. So we now have our first version of our app, but it does, it's not branded yet. But anyway, let's commit it. Uh, let's get this committed. So git add index at HTML, git commit minus M, feet initial implementation, git push. Okay, great. We've now safely saved our work before we go messing around with our first ever sub-module. Let's, let's get this safe. Because that's commit early and commit often, as <laughs> someone would say. Hi, Homa. Thank you, Homa. <laughs> okay. So to add a sub-module, you won't be surprised to find that the command is git submodule add. This is very clever. At the very, 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 very least, you need to tell it where to go fetch the code from. So a URL is the required argument. So hang on. I, as app developer two, I know I've been working here for ages. I know we have branding. I know that I have to go get that submodule. correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. And as a developer, you're always going to be adding it because you want to, right? You're going to have a reason to want to add a submodule. Mm -hmm. That reason will be different depending on the real world scenario. But yes, in this case, the developer here has been told you need to bring the brand in and you know that you do that with a submodule because we don't duplicate the brand. We copy it insensibly because we, we we're an organized company here. So you always have to give it a URL to clone from. And you can optionally give it a second argument, which is the actual folder you'd like it cloned into. If you run it without giving it a folder, it will take the name of the repository without its .git on the end and use that as a folder name. So for us, that would mean it would use the folder name PBS core dash brand. But I don't want it to be called PBS core dash brand. I want it to be called brand. So I do give it a second argument. The second argument I give it is in fact the name of the folder I really want, which is brand. So for us, it's going to be a two argument. So git submodule add the, rel the path to our, bra our brand and then the folder we want brand. You skipped a section. You did talked I? about, yeah, right after you explained that oh, git yes, has the URL, you start talking about looking for the repo. Right. Okay. So before we, yeah, I want to show you a before and an after. So once we actually add our submodule, that's going to have an effect on our local repository here. So before we do it, I want to show you what it looks like when there are no submodules. You kind of know it already because that's how every module has looked or every repository has looked since we started doing Git. But let's just prove it to ourselves. Try to show the current contents of the .git modules file. There's another typo. Um, and it will say there's no such file or directory. Okay. And if you type if you type git submodule, it will go straight back to your cursor. It will just no, I don't know what you're talking about. No submodules here. Okay. It's not an error. It's you know, you've asked it to list all of nothing and it's gone, okay, here's nothing. Good day. All right. Uh I'm trying to make sure I got the typo right. It should be cat.git modules. Yes, because remember I said I wish they'd named that pretty yes. file so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and it's plural, which is interesting because all the other times we say get it's module. Well, but anyway. well, you can have as many as you like, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Okay, so that proves that we don't have one yet. So now we're going to add it with git so module add pa a URL to repository space name of folder. And that's going to fail because we're using relative file paths and the git submodule add does a second thing. It will actually clone the repository for us. Hmm. It will add and clone. And that second and clone will fail if we don't do it with the minus C protocol file allow always. Because we had a path. Okay. Because we had a path. So you'll see immediately the folder gets added and immediately we get our clone. So this is it being helpful. This is how we wish the original clone would have worked actually. Right. But it's very helpfully gone and done it all correctly. 
So now if we look for the file named git modules, and this time it's right in the show notes, oh look, it now has a submodule named brand with the path brand and the URL, whatever it is. And if we run the git submodule command, it shows us our submodule without a minus because, hey, I've already cloned it. We're all good here. No here changes. Okay. So now we can see if we look at the content of the brand folder, it has the style.css file that we need. Um, but we haven't actually added it into, oh, sorry. I'm a, yeah, okay. Sorry, my show notes have me slightly confused. If we do a git status, by the way, let's just catch, we, we're not going to do any more changes other than just add the submodule because I want to show you what the git status looks like now. So the git status, before we do any more work, tells us there's a new file, the git, the git modules file, and it tells us there's a new file named brand. Now, notice it refers to the entire submodule as a single unit named hmm. brand. Yeah. It doesn't tell us what's in there because all it's actually saving in its database is the URL to clone from and the number of the commit. Oh. That's what's actually saved is the ID of the commit. So that commit could contain a million files, oh. but as far as our database is concerned, all we save is this is the commit I want. So we're not duplicating all of that code in the brand repository. We're just oh. saying which one should be checked out. Oh, that's really interesting. Okay. So it's kind of like a symlink or like a, a, a shortcut in the finder, not yeah. in the shortcuts app. Ooh, that word has become overloaded. <laughs> um, and when we change things, all that's going to do is change which commit should be in that folder. It's not going to, it's not going to save as changes all those millions of changes. It's just going to cha save the new hash. So it's very sensibly inefficient. You're linking to the hash sitting on that other remote repository. Okay, so now we can actually use the style.css by adding it into the top of our HTML file. It would just be the single line link rel equals style sheet href equals dot slash brand style.css. But to save you the bother, I've saved a copy of the HTML file with that already in place that you can just copy and paste over the current one using the cp command in the show notes. Okie dokie. So now when we do a git status, we still see that we have our new submodule and we see that we have modified index.html. Ah, yes. So now, A, if you refresh in your browser, you can see that we have our brand, but B, we're now ready to commit our changes. So git commit minus am feet incorporate the corporate branding using a submodule, git push. Got it. Okay. I'm playing along and it's working. It's doing everything you're saying. So that's two very common scenarios beginning to basically, I call it consuming someone else's code with a submodule, right? I want the brand in my project. I'm going to consume it from their Git repository. So now let's look at what happens over time. So great. I have consumed the brand into my two apps. And now the brand designer has decided that, oh, we need to modernize our brand. Uh -huh. or fix a bug, whatever, right? And that means that our two developers are going to have to, in a controlled way, bring that change into their versions of, you know, into their apps, right? They're bringing that code in in a controlled way. That's the whole point of this. So we're going to step through that process by becoming, we're going to wear three hats, not at the same time. First, we're going to start with the brand designer's hat. They're just going to update the brand. And then we're going to put on the hat of app developer one, and we're going to take that change from the brand into our app. And then we're going to on the hat of app developer two and take that change and bring it into our app. And you might say, Bart, that sounds like you're making me do the same thing twice. And we've already been recording for an hour. Why are you making me do the same thing twice? <laughs> and the version of the show notes you proofread didn't make you do the same thing twice. So you're now looking very confused at me. But this is my morning's work here. So there are actually two completely different ways of interacting with submodules. And I, I, talk, I think of them as the inside out and the outside in. So you can work with the submodules from the point of view of the outer module and never leave the outer module. You can do everything from the outer module and sort of command the submodules to do things. That makes sense. Or you can change into the submodule with a CD, at which point you're in a Git repository. 
Okay. And then you can do everything you need to do using only the git commands we have known all along. Pull, fetch, status, pull, push, commit. Nothing more, and you can work with submodules. But then you have to CD into the folder and work in there. Okay. So both are perfectly valid. If you do it from the outside in, you can update a thousand submodules in one command. And so if you always want all the changes from everywhere, that makes sense. Yeah. In my real world experience, I'm way more picky. Really? I want to update a specific plugin. So I go into the oh. submodule for that specific plugin. I interact with it. And then I step back and I commit the fact that there's now a new hash. Okay. So this is, uh, in, in my world, sort of like going into the app store and saying, I would like to manually update my, my uh, apps. I go in and I see there's 37 and I say, I'm going to do this one, this one, this one, but I don't want to do Xcode right now because it's going to take an hour and a half because it's so big to, and picking, or Correct. that's dangerous to what I'm trying to work on right now. I don't want to do that one. So this would allow you that control. It would. And okay. sometimes what you want to do is test a plugin you're very nervous about. Yeah. And so you're going to do it. Just this one, please. Surgically. That's not, yeah. Yeah. Surgically, okay. as you would say, a good engineer change one thing at a time. <laughs> That's what, know so we're going to do it both ways. Okay. Yeah. So step one is the easy part. We're going to be brand design updater person. So we're going to change into the folder for PC brand designer where we will find the repository for our brand. So change into that as well. So you're now going to be in PC brand designer slash PC corp or PBS corp brand. So you're now in the Git repository. So this is a clone from the company's Git server of the repository that holds the brand. So this is our normal life. This is a Git repository like these show notes. This is a normal Git repository that we've cloned from a server. So all we do is we change our style sheet. The change we're going to make is a little arbitrary, but I had to do something. At the moment, all six of our H tags are blue. I would like them to alternate. So H1, 3, and 5 get to stay blue, but 2, 4, and 6 are going to become green. So I could show you the CSS code, but we've done that all. So you can copy my updated version of the file over a style.css in this repository with the command in the show notes. And all it's doing is changing the CSS in style.css. I'm afraid that command breaks. Um, are you in the right folder? I'm in PC dash brand designer. So you didn't go be? into the repository. Ah, no. there we go. Sorry. Gotcha. Good. All right. That worked. Good. Okay. So we've now changed our brand. So if we do a git status, it'll say, hey, look, you've modified style.css. Look at that. So this is just like you fixing my typos. You have a lot of those today. So what do we do? Well, we go git commit minus am feet altering heading colors or alternate heading colors. Git push. Okay. Right. Completely normal. This is what we do in Git. This is what we learned all the time, right? So the, the brand designer, he's just, or she, they, them, they've done their thing. Mm -hmm. So now app developer two, one, is going to consume that change from the outside in. They're going to only work from their outer repository, they're never going to step into the submodule. They're going to stay in the outer module and do it, a repository and do it all from there. Okay. So we're going to change into PC app one devs folder and then into the repository for PC core app one. So app, the app one dev slash PC core app one. And if you do a git status, you might have assumed, oh, this is going to tell us that there's a new version of the brand we could choose to bring in, but no. But no. no, no, no. Why would it do it now if it didn't do it at the beginning, right? <laughs> exactly. So it says, oh, you're on branch main. You're in line with origin and there's nothing to commit. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's do a git fetch, but tell it to fetch everything. So this is one of those secret commands. So git fetch minus minus recurse minus submodules. What do you call and it? And instead of only it's asking... Secret. Well, okay, not uh, tricky, hidden, not obvious. Yeah, okay. non non obvious. Something we haven't learned before. Something okay. you need to go read the manual for. Okay, speaking from experience. 
And now we can see it says, oh, look, there's a, there's a new commit. Uh, you know, you're seeing it consume something. Oh, look, there's a new commit there uh, on Origin Main inside uh, PC Core brand. Hmm. Right, it says yeah. fetching submodule brand, and it says, oh, look, there's a new commit on main. Yeah, git status still says, nope, you're all good. You got nothing to do. Right. Because from the point of view of the parent module or the outer module, nothing has changed yet. You haven't actually, you've done a fetch. Yeah, not a pull. You haven't done a pull. Okay. So how do we do a pull? Well, we actually don't have to do a pull because we're, on, we're in the outer, we're doing the outside in. So actually, we can use the git submodule command to just update all the submodules, all of them, just get all of their latest versions. We didn't, you know, we just, whatever, whatever's behind what it could be, you've just done the fetch, you know what's behind. So you can just say. So, so we did git fetch minus minus recurse dash submodules, and that pulled all of the possible change. It didn't pull. It fetched the changes so that it knows what, what's out there. So any submodule I had, it now knows about it. And when I do a uh, git with the always allow thing, submodule update minus minus remote, that's saying, now I want you to actually update all those submodules. So you don't use pull because we're yes. outside. Correct. We're okay. the outside in. So we're telling the submodules, oh, just update yourself. Okay. Under the hood, there's absolutely a pull happening, which is why we have to use the minus C to tell it that we're okay with it pulling from a file because it's our git submodule command is actually causing git pull commands. It could be causing hundreds of them if you have lots of submodules. But it's okay. just, we're doing it from the outside in, so we're just saying, dear submodules, update yourselves. Go, go get, you, you know what the latest version is, make it, make it so. Okay, right, right. And so when you do that, you will see submodule path brand checked out, and we have a different hash. Ends okay. in 8355, because it's a whole new commit. It has a different hash. And if we open our app now in our browser, now the H2 is a different color to the H1. We have a blue heading and a green heading. Hmm. I'm supposed to be in PBS Core app two, right? No, app one. Oh. We haven't done app two yet. We're in the folder for app one. Sorry. I had the app one. Okay, let me go back to that one. Refresh it. Here we go. Oh, look at that. The second heading's green. Still a silly font, but it's working. Very exciting. Okay. Got it. Yes. Very okay. exciting. That's okay. Right. So we have now made some sort of a change in our outer module and we're doing it from the outside in. So everything from our, we're working entirely in the outer module. So if we do a git status, what does the outer module now think? The outer module thinks there is one change. You have checked out a different commit on your submodule brand. Yeah. So it says modified brand, new commits. Okay. So. We want to push that. So we just say git commit minus am feet updated brand git push. And now that new uh, hash is now been pushed up to the server as the one, the next person to clone or the next person to pull should have. Okay. Got it. Got it. So that's the outside in. And that, that worked for one submodule, and it would work for 100 submodules all at the same time. I kind of hope that's the way I get to do it. That's how, that makes sense to me. But all right, let's do scenario. Let's do, we're going to go inside and do it next, right? Well, see, there's a, there's a reason you like scenario 3C, because it means you don't have to learn any new commands. This is how I do all of my submodule stuff, because I don't have to remember anything. Oh, I just do what okay. I know how to do anyway. Okay. And all I'm right. very lazy. You're selling it. So... I'm selling it. So we're going to be, now we're going to app two. So make sure you're in the folder, PC app two, PC core app two. And because we're going to work from the inside out, go into the brand folder, go into the submodule. Go in as in CD? CD into the brand. Yeah. Cause we're doing it inside okay. out. So go right into that Git module. All right. And if you do a git status, initially, right now, it says your brand is up to date with origin slash main. Oh, that's weird. Mm -hmm. Well, remember, we're on the command line. You and I have gotten way too used to shiny GUIs. <laughs> Every time you look at a GUI, it does a fetch for you behind oh, your back. Oh, right, right, right. That's why yeah. it's always showing you the stuff you can pull. But we're on the terminal. So we got to go git space fetch. Okay. We don't have to do any fancy commands. We don't have to remember city flags because we're, mm -hmm. we're inside. So we just do a git fetch. And now, I'm if behind. we do a git status, it says, oh, 
you're behind by one commit. Uh-huh. Okay, well, what do we do if we were writing the show notes? Git pull. Right. Now, of course, we could just walk into that folder and do a git pull without doing a fetch first, because when you do a pull, it does a fetch, but then we wouldn't know in advance what we were getting. Which, to be honest, when I get to the show notes that you've edited, I don't have to look at them first. I just pull without looking. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's what you want to do. But anyway, to see what we're doing, we've done a fetch and then a pull. Right, right. So we are now, we have, sorry, we just successfully, that's it, right? So on the inside, we have now successfully gotten our change. Okay, but we are in a module in a module. Or sorry, we are in a repository in a repository. So let's cd dot dot. Uh, And let's now look at the universe from the point of view of the outer repository. So if we cd dot dot, and then we do a git status, well, actually what it shows us is exactly what it showed us after we did the outside in commands. It says modified brand new commits. Yeah. Because the hash has changed. Yeah. And it needs to commit to its outer self that the hash has changed. So git commit minus am feet update brand git push. Yeah. Ooh, you used past tense, Bart. I'm changing it. Oh, update sugar. Update brand, you know. Yeah, we, do. That, that's such a weird um, thing. I, know. I always want to think of it in past tense, but we made a, we made a rule that we were going to follow the guidelines, which are its present tense. Update brand. Yes, it's Almost the imperative. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. That, you're right. I like 3C. I like that better. I don't have to remember all those other commands. See? I just go in. And, and to be honest, I am the kind of person who updates every app manually and glances at least at the, for the apps I care, glances at the, at the notes to see what it is. Well, I want to know what the cool shiny is. If it updates it automatically, I won't know what features to go look for. Whereas yeah. if I read the release notes, I know what's cool, right? Hey, can I, I don't do read the them all, section? but some of the apps I do. Yes, please. All right, so I asked Bart after reading the show notes and going through this once. Um, so this is all well and good on the command line, but how would I know if there were submodules on uh, when I was using a GUI? And he said, look at the GUI. <laughs> and was, oh, fine, Bart. <laughs> and so I opened up uh, the show notes in, uh, or I'm sorry, I, I opened up these repos in two different apps. I've started playing around with something called GitFox, which you can get from um, Setapp. And I also opened in Git Kraken, which is the one I'm actually used to using because it's what Bart uses. And on both of them, in the left sidebar, there's a thing that says submodules, and under it, you can see brand. So that's how I knew that there was a submodule. They did a little bit differently. Git Kraken actually tells you um, how many submodules are there in a little number, and then it's got a little up arrow if you're working on it. And uh, But I got a little leaf on submodules on GitFox, which I thought was cute since we talk about branches. This is a leaf. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it is actually very cute. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed this part. This was uh this was fun and I think you set up some really good examples. I know they're contrived and everything, but I didn't really get into programming by stealth until I could see what it does. So seeing the branding changes, seeing the 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 color changes and uh that that mattered to me. That made me go, "Oh, I see what I did. I changed this, that changed and then this happened." I need the visual. I'm I'm that kind of a person. So I really like this lesson. I- and remember, the apps are silly and the brand is silly, but the process is identical to a real app getting a real new brand that's actually done with care, right? The scenario is realistic, even if our actual code is very silly. Right. Um, right. So that sets us up for a part two. So there is something that is in common with all of our examples today. We have been the passive receivers of other people's code. Right? We have consumed the brand, and that's very helpful. And that's how, in my real world, I use submodules almost all the time, is to passively consume plugins to things and so forth. So that's already very powerful. But you don't have to be passive inside the submodule. It is a Git repository. So we have already seen that we can go in and do a Git fetch and a Git pull. It's not a million miles of a shock to tell you that you can also do a git commit and a git push inside the submodule mm. to send changes up the other way. And that opens up a whole avenue of very powerful things. And so that's the first of our scenarios next time is App2's developer has decided that they want to expand the branding. They want to add some support for something the brand doesn't currently have. And they're going to do that work inside App2 
prove it works, and then they're going to push it up to the brand. All right. And then, so that's our first of our important scenarios. And the second thing we haven't yet looked at is the fact that the entire submodule is saved as a hash. And it pretends it's a file with that hash. So if we make a branch, we can have that same submodule be linked to a different hash. So you can have a dev branch of your router repo that is talking to an old version or a new version of the brand, a test version of the brand, while the main branch of your outer module or your outer repository is still linked to the production branch. Oh, interesting. Of okay. The brand. So you can do a lockstep. Let me test this change in a controlled way by messing with branches with submodules. So that's, that's scenario cool. five. All right. Well, this sounds fun. I'm um, I'm excited. This is cool. I really enjoyed this episode. This was uh, this was a lot of fun. Okie dokie. Well, until next time, remember, folks, happy computing. If you learn as much from BART each week as I do, I'd like you to go over to lets-talk.ie and press one of the buttons over there to help support him. He does 98% of the work here. I'm just the stooge that listens to him and asks the dumb questions. If you go over to lets-talk.ie, you can support him on Patreon, you can donate via PayPal, or you can use one of his referral links. I really hope you'll go over and help him out. In the meantime, you can contact me at Podfeet or check out all of the shows we do over there over at podfeet.com. Thanks for listening and stay subscribed.